Hi guys, the weather has gotten really, really, really nasty and my lights keep blinking on and off. And um, if I get off the internet, I'm having a, a horrible time trying to get back on. Um, so I'm doing a recording instead of the Zoom Live tonight, simply because the weather has gotten so nasty on us. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I actually also uh, loaded yesterday a, an outline for you guys to look at to go through your chapter. I know that we don't love doing lecture this way, but um, for now, this is, you know, this is kind of where we're at for now. Um, we're talking about the eye ocular adnexa on page 574. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I did not get um, all of the page numbers written in, but I'm going to do the best I can. Okay, the eye and the ocular adnexa subsection includes code 65091 through 68899. Some categories are a little different. For example, the subheading eyeball has categories for both removal of the eye and removal of foreign bodies. And the terminology is very, very important in this section. Code descriptions often vary only slightly. So that is just found in um, that very first little paragraph on 574. The eye, ocular, and anexa, our second slide. Sorry. I have lost my place. Here we go. I'm sorry. Here we go. Um, codes are divided anatomically. For example, the eyeball and then the conjunctiva and then the anterior segment, then the posterior segment and the ocular adnexa. Those are how the codes are divided. Some codes specifically for patients previously operated on. Um, that's just one of those little FYI, um, as you're coding, you're going to be able to point those out very, very quickly. Okay, um, our next slide on eye and ocular adnexa is there's a lot of bundling in these uh, codes. Example, subheading posterior segment, prophylaxis category, notes indicate the following descriptors intended to include all, session, all sessions and defied treatment period. So you're gonna have some globals in there, which would be bundling. So now we're gonna talk about the eyeball and um, you're gonna find that at the bottom of page 574. Codes in this category are divided based on which procedure was performed whether an implant was inserted and whether a bony orbit was removed or a muscle flap was performed. So let's just take a look at uh, some um, codes here. For example, removal of the eye report, you could have an evis evisceration, which is not 65091 and 65093. The removal of contents of globe, you guys have those, and those are just a couple of different kinds of the removal of eyeball and different scenarios that could happen there. So then we have removal of foreign body. The removal codes are reported for foreign bodies that had either located in the external eye or the intraocular eye. Now, I know that that isn't written on this slide. I'm just reading you some notes. I'm gonna tell you what a slit lamp is. A slit lamp is a low powered microscope with high intensity light source. This focuses the light as a long narrow beam to actually examine the eye. And it tells you that um, here at the bottom too. You guys pay close attention to the notes because there are extensive notes in this section. Now we're moving to the anterior segment, and that includes the cornea, the anterior chamber, the anterior sclera, iris, ciliary body, lens, 
intraocular lens procedures, and other procedures. The anterior segment is the front portion of the eyeball. This is the cornea to the lens. So um, that very first slide that you guys are gonna see, that's actually, um, I think it might be your um, lab today to draw and label the eyeball. So you don't have to watch that first slide again. And excuse the scratching noise my dog wants in, sorry. So now we're gonna talk about the cornea. The cornea is the transparent part of the eye. And here are some examples of procedures. A keratoplasty is a repair of the cornea, 65710 to 65757. And a penetrating keratoplasty, full thickness of the cornea removed. And then you have something that's called replaced with a donor cornea. A fakia is the absence of lens of the eye. And pseudofakia, presence of artificial lens after con uh, cataract surgery. The anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is the fluid filled space behind the cornea and in front of the iris. So here are some uh, procedures in this uh, category. Paracentesis, paracentesis is the removal of fluid. Goniotomy is surgical procedure using a gyneo lens to view the eye. And synechia, which is adhesions. And there's a little more information off to the side there. I'll let you read that yourself. A little bit more about the anterior chamber. The anterior sclera is the white fibrous outer layer of the eyeball. And guys, uh, this is page 577 in your step-by-step -step manual. And I'm kind of looking as we go along, and I think that these slides are kind of going in, uh, in pretty, pretty well in order. Uh, with our step-by-step. -step. So um, excisions of lesions are accessed by incising the conjunctiva. A trabulectomy, ab externo, involves trabicular, trabicular meshwork, and the surgery reshapes or punctures the meshwork as a treatment for glycoma or trauma. Now we're gonna talk about the iris, the ciliary body, and the, yeah, and the ciliary body. Uh, you're going to find that on page 578 of your step-by-step. -step. The iris is the colored portion of the eye. The ciliary body is located behind the iris and produces the aqueous humor. The iris ciliary body contains codes for lesions and treatment of glaucoma. So a, a oh goodness, a, a iridectomy performed for removal of lesion, treatment of glycoma, laser iridectomy, I'm sorry, iridotomy and iridectomy, and photocoagulation. Photocoagulation. Boy, we couldn't say I couldn't say that three times fast. Okay, now we're gonna move into the lens. And again, that's on page 578, and it's right under ciliary body and iris, okay? Removal of cataracts is the most common procedure done on the eye. So you're gonna be able to see that um, beside lens, it's kind of going in line with that. Doesn't say it verbatim, but that's pretty much what it says. The codes are divided by the approach used. Many times cataracts appear as a patient ages. These are called senile cataracts. So under cataracts, we see in our slide, nuclear cataract is the most common. And you guys can read through those things. Uh, well, I wanna um, point out cortical cataract forms in a lens of cortex and extends outward and that's common in di diabetes. A 
Okay, we're gonna do a little bit more on the lens. Removal and lens placement. The three types of extraction are extracapsular, intracapsular, and focal, fo okay, I'm not gonna even be able to say that word, but you can see it on page 578 under um, lens. Um, the removal and lens placement, extracapsulary cataract extraction is an ECCE, it's partial removal. It removes hard nucleus in one piece and soft cortex in multiple pieces. Intracapsular cataract extraction, ICCE, total removal removes lenses and capsules in one piece. And the word that I can't seem to say, mulsification is the back part of that. The small incision into eye, introduction of probe, high frequency waves, fragment cataract, lens placed through same small incision. Okay, now we're gonna move into the posterior segment. And guys, I am looking in our step-by-step -step manual and it doesn't actually have something labeled posterior segment, but actually the posterior segment is page 578 and it begins with our extraocular muscles. So that's what they're referring to. So we're still in on page 578. So, um, Posterior segment codes include virtuous procedures for removal of vitreous humor of the eye. That's vitreous procedures. Vitreous procedures for removal of vitreous humor from the eye, repair and retinal detachment, and destruction of lesion of retinal or choroid. Choroid. Oh. Guys, I think I need a, like um, a dictionary that tells me how to say words. <laughs> anyway, okay. So now we're going to move to extraocular muscles. And you'll see that uh, that's on page 578. Strabismus surgery corrects muscles misalignment. Horizontal muscles are 67311 through 67312 and move the eye side to side. Vertical muscles, 67314 through 67316, moves the eye up and down. Codes are divided by the type of repair and the number of muscles repaired. Okay, so blepharotomy, we're talking about the eyelids now. And again, that's at the bottom of page 578. And I want to point out your um, modifiers down there, your E1, upper left eyelid, E2, lower left eyelid, E3, upper right eyelid, and E4, lower right eyelid. Blepher, blepharotomy, Incision into eyelid for drainage of abscess. Blepharoplasty, the repair of eyelid. Codes in the integumentary system, 15820 through 15823. Codes in the eye and ocular adnexa are those lists of codes there. Selection of the code depends on technique used for the repair. So here are those modifiers that I just talked to you about at the bottom of page 578. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna take a little drink. So now we're gonna go into the auditory system, which is our ears. And I have a little um, video for you here that you, you can watch, but we're gonna move past that for time's sake. The auditory system. Codes are divided by external ear, middle ear, internal ear, temporal bone, middle fossa approach. 
The outer and middle ear function as conduction of sound waves through the ear. The inner ear contains structures that receive the auditory waves and relay them to the brain. Your operating mi microscope is found with um, under code 69990. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. We're gonna talk about the division of the auditory system. You have the external, middle, and internal ear. And I have actually turned the uh, page, but I really think that we're still on page 580. Uh, yeah, because that's the, that's the picture, but you can see that, um, that uh, picture on page 580 of your step-by-step -step manual. So now we're gonna talk about the auditory system. Further divisions on procedure are incision, excision, removal of the foreign body, repair, and other. You're gonna see that on page 581. Each subheading is further divided according to procedure, such as introduction, incision, excision, removal of foreign body, repair, and or other procedures. Um, that is not on your slide, that's just extra information. But you'll see there um, under external ear, it has incision, excision, and the removal of foreign body and repair. So um, that, that will give you a more lengthy definition actually in your book. External ear. Incision, drainage of abscess or hematoma. You have your simple code and your complicated code. Excision biopsy, external ear, external auditory canal, excision of external ear, partial and complete. And your codes are actually listed there for you. So now we're gonna talk about the removal of a foreign body. We are still on page 581. Foreign body removals of the ear are based on whether it's general, whether general anesthesia was used or not. Um, and then we have a few other things here. Um, you can have a, a impacted cerumen, which that means that um, there's lots of earwax in there. Katrina, you working for Dr. Webb's office, I'm sure that you uh, know a lot about the ears already. Irrigation and lavage. Bilateral, you're gonna add a modifier 50. Instrumentation, and here's your code. And you're gonna have bilateral, you're gonna add the modifier 50. 69209 bundles with 69210. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about an autoplasty. An autoplasty is for protruding ears. I'm sorry guys, hang on, I have to turn my phone off. I thought I did. I apologize about that guys. I'm not stopping now, we've gone too far. <laughs> um, may or may not decrease external ear size, add 50 for both ears. Repair, and this is just some extra information, it's not on our slide. Repairs of the external ear may be performed due to stenosis, due to injury or infection or congenital defect. Be careful in this area not to unbundle procedures. Okay, so now we're going into the middle ear and um, that's on page 581. The eustachian tube plays an important role by draining fluid out of the ear. Eustachian tube dysfunction is common in children due to the tube not maturing and therefore not working as well as in an adult. PE tubes are inserted to help with the drainage. They may later be removed, fall out naturally over time, or stay in without problems. Eustachian tubes, and uh, I'm reading up here on our slide now, connects middle ear to the back of the throat for drainage. 
fluid collects in the middle ear when the tube malfunctions and prevents air from entering middle ear and pressure builds. Surgical intervention. A myringotomy, incision into the tym tympanic membrane, relieve pressure and drains pus. Time penostomy, incision and placement of PE tube, pressure equalization, repair of eardrum and hearing mechanic mechanism. Hearing mechanism, sorry guys. Myringotomy include, included in a tam time penostomy tubes. So that's going to be on page 581 at the bottom under middle ear. We're going to continue with middle ear for just a, another slide here. So a canoplasty or a canoplasty, it's a reconstruction of external auditory canal. The codes are based on stenosis or congenital defect. Caution, canoplasty or canoplasty bundled into some middle ear repair codes. For example, 69631 through 69646. Okay, now we're moving to the inner ear and uh, that's the bottom of page 582. A labyrinthotomy. Surgical incision into the cave-like structure, structure, the labyrinth of the ear. If pressure builds within the labyrinth, it may result in vertigo, ringing, hearing loss, etc. 69801 is transcanal. So we're going to talk about the incision portion of uh, the inner ear. A labyrinthectomy. Incus and staples are removed. Codes are based on approach, such as Transcan <laughs> trans trans canal and post ocular behind the ear. I'm sorry, guys. It seems like it's been a long day. So now we're going to go to in introduction, page 583. A cochlear device implant is a computerized device that is placed inside the ear that restores partial hearing in people with profound hearing loss. And that is like your first line there. A receiver is used outside of the ear to help pick up sound waves. So 69930 is introduction. It's co cochlear device implant, computerized device, restores partial hearing. Receiver on outside of skin, behind ear, over the site of transmitter. Transmitter implanted under skin. Sound processor connected to an electrode implanted in cochlea. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the temporal bone. Page 583, right under introduction. The middle fossa approach is used to excise acoustic numer numerous decompress facial nerves and repair nerves in the vestibular labyrinth. So that is again that first line. So um, our temporal bone middle fossa approach 69950 through 69979. Surgical approach used with repair vestibular labyrinth nerves 69950. Decompress facial nerves 69955. Decompress internal auditory canal, 69960, and removal of neoplasm from temporal bone, 69970. Okay, and now we're going to talk about the operating microscope, and that's 584. Code 69990 is an add on code and is billed separately when used with the primary procedure. Read notes carefully for the operating microscope in the CPT. It states clearly when this is a billable service, service and when it would be bundled into the main procedure. The operating microscope used when procedures using microsurgical techniques code in addition to the primary procedure performed. For example, 15758 free fascal flap with microvascular antistomosis. 
Note that the following 15758 is the statement. Do not report code 69990 in addition to code 15758. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I did not look those up in the CPT. I'm going to let you guys do that. Um, but that is all of the slides. I hope that I didn't confuse you. And I'm sorry that I'm not going to get on live tonight because of the weather. And um, I'm just a little concerned about internet problems. And it is looking really, really bad here. So I'm a little frightful, but <laughs> I'll be praying that we're all safe. Guys, I miss you. I appreciate you. You're amazing. And um, we're going to be back together soon. So keep your chin up. Call me if you need me. Text me if you need me. I have my phone with me all the time. Have a good evening.